For years now, about three and a half years, I have been arguing that we are not passive victims of the future. Many people talk as if their only interest in the future is in what's going to happen. Not how they could shape it or how others could shape it, but just what's going, going to happen. And that's as far as it goes. That never made any sense to me. But if you're going to shape the future, first of all, who is this we who's going to shape the future? How big could that we be? And it should be as big as the university systems worldwide. And shouldn't the universities be doing this? There are no courses about the singularity and you know, exponential change in the way we speak of it here um, they, that, that are taught as a part of regular curriculum anyway. So I, I have been arguing to do that. And uh, so let, let's uh, go forward here. So I, I have been talking about this in text and video blogs for quite a while as if I expected somebody else to do it. And then I, I realized that perhaps the, the, the way to get this done is, is for me to do it. So it, it became apparent that I should take a first uh, step. And that, really that's what I'm talking about, is the creation of a course. I, I don't know if any of you have created a university course or know anything about it, but the folklore is that it takes more than a year. And that's awfully slow for what we're uh, talking about. So I was frustrated by that, but it turned out not to be true. So we, we are starting this course that I'm talking about this uh, uh, September the 8th, so a few days from now. And um, so, so it's gone reasonably quickly. What's the course called? What I quickly learned is if you have the word singularity, in the name of the course, nobody will know what you're talking about, unfortunately. E even though you can argue that the singularity is now mainstream, it's been on the cover of Time ma magazine in February, and, and you know what happened in Jeopardy, and, and so on. It's mainstream in the sense that people could have heard of it, or they could have looked into it, but not in the sense that everybody has. So um, what I have, have done is, is to find that you need to use a different term. So we're talking about technology and the future of medicine internally. I'm a physician in the faculty of medicine. This sells well internally, but externally, a lot of what we're teaching has nothing to do with medicine. It's much broader than that. So you can say it's just about technology and the future. I, I've had a long-term interest in this idea of merger between humans and machines while maintaining uh, the higher elements of the human spirit, what we're all proud of in terms of our humanness. And I, I've talked about this kind of thing and about the AI physician and particularly uh, existential risks um, in, in, in many different forms. I am a writer, we've been writing various books, but we started to write a book specifically on the uh, singularity this February, because uh, as I've said, a lot of things happened then. And we figure if we don't get this book done quickly, it, it, it won't be of any value. So, so we are writing it quite quickly. And so from the point of view of the students in the course, it's exciting then that they are learning about this from somebody who's writing a book at the same time, so they feel kind of uh, collaborative in that. This is uh, Nikki Olson, my writing partner. We've been working together on various things in this field for seven years. This is Ray's definition of the singularity. Of course, there, there are many such statements you can use. This is the one that we're using in the course. It comes from uh, the singularity is near. The second writing partner who uh, discovered Legionnaire's disease, uh, had a, had a uh, really meteoric rise, worked in the Clinton White House. And what I'm about to say is exactly true, that she went from working with Bill Clinton to working with me. It was a bit of a down. <laughs> but anyway, when the Clinton 
presidency ended, we, we began working together on writing texts. She is all, also playing a role in the course. And the, the course talks about many of the same things we talk about here. But if you think about it, there's one other thing that would be necessary locally to sell such a course, which is the technology skeptics. You need them also to be part of it to provide uh, balance. So we're talking about, once again, not being a passive victim of the future, uh, how to shape a positive outcome. And remember Lysenko. I mean, you can't just have one path, one group. That, that's the reason. We need to spread this very widely to get all of the truth and to get a lot of people working on this in various ways. Because otherwise, we, we, we could end up uh, going very wrong, down the wrong path. Also, this idea of uh, uh, democratization of evil, we're in essence talking about the future of health, medicine meets the matrix and neuromancer, but we are also involving technology skeptics, and people seem really relaxed when we tell them about this. We pick most charismatic teachers that, that we have, who are always talking about how they're not high-tech people, and, and we have three of them teaching in this course. My secret uh, prediction is that they will become uh, advocates for uh, technology when, as the course progresses. Now, why is it that there are not already lots of courses out there on this in mainstream uh, universities everywhere? I think it is that the structures of the universities are often too slow, and, and secondly, there is a highly speculative flavor to some of the uh, ideas, and the ideas uh, in some areas. For instance, if you take uh, cryonics and the idea that nanotech will cure everything before you rewarm the body, which is what many people in uh, cryonics are saying, that, that any damage can, can be ma magically cured. There, there are things like, like that, that that make people in mainstream uh, universities skeptical about what we talk about here. But that doesn't mean this is not a fixable problem. I'm, I'm sure it is. So we, we have some of the best and most uh, charismatic people from across uh, the campus teaching in this course. We were told it would take a year to be able to teach it, but we found, found a way to start much sooner than that. We'll start out as a CME course, a continuing medical education course this fall, and starting in uh, January, it's a grad student course, and there are a lot of people, we've, we've done uh, focus groups to plan the course, and uh, that, that has generated a really, very great interest in, in the course. But I think what we're doing locally is not the exciting thing. The exciting thing would be how to broaden this. How to broaden it in terms of the age of the people. Maybe we could begin this teaching in high school. And secondly, how to broaden it countrywide, worldwide. Uh, and so this is perhaps one logical path to um, widespread singularity education, to really getting the message out, mainstreaming it. And uh, it, there, there is the question of where you can approach this earlier in, in life. If you think of a 10th grader, they would be ready if you think of a 10th grader in the U.S., probably there would be enormous resistance to this on the part of um, parents. So, so I, I think that getting this into high schools will probably occur in some other uh, country before the U.S. So I watch this space. I'm very dedicated to, to doing this. I think what occurs here is wonderful. We have to find a way to expand it and to make people in mainstream uh, universities aware of this. Do I have any uh, broader role here? It's rather hard to, to answer that. But some of you may know that on Facebook there, there's a group called the Human 2.0 Council. I'm the Minister for Education, if you believe it. 
for, for this uh, secret group. And some of you may be going to their meeting on, De on December 16th and 17th in uh, Los Angeles. They're having something called uh, Extreme Future Fest. And it's a very, very interesting meeting. Um, and, and so you might want to look at the website. So the idea is to worldwide think of a way to get courses and changes in you know, disciplines. If you think, what would it take really to shape the future? It would not come simply from law or simply from psychology or simply from politics. It's, it, it's a matter of combining many different things in new ways within the university sector to really get this done. And it shouldn't just occur a few places. To, to do it right, it should occur many different places. So I'm very uh, uh, dedicated to uh, replicating what I'm doing and to getting many other people to do it in their own fashion, in their own places. Thank you very much for the opportunity to s speak here, and I, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. It, al although it should probably all always be centered here. It would be wonderful to have nodes and, and a lot of specific uh, similar you know, activity to what we do here in many other uh, parts of the world. National uh, Defense, uh, excuse me, National Intelligence University published my paper in 2008 by Barton Kunstler as part of the Proteus Monograph series and it was called uh, Leadership in the Age of the Human Singularity new skills, new demands, new responses, and that was an attempt to develop an awareness of how to design a curriculum to build the future leaders in the age of the singularity. So the government is paying attention, and mm -hmm. we'll see more to come. Well, I, I think it, it's obvious to you all, but that you know, the SU leadership has been talking to uh, leaders of large uh, nations in the world. And, and so we're obviously getting the message across at the highest level. It's, it's just a matter of the fact that uh, the university should also be uh, teaching this. And there's been a resistance to these ideas within the university sector. So Kim, uh, we've had long dialogues about this kind of thing. I think it's really great. Um, and I think that doing this in the context of a medical school really is important. 